So the Lakers are one win away from a return to the NBA Finals. That doesn't mean for sure that they'll get there. The Nuggets still have two big-time stars on their roster and a team that's returned from the dead so many times it should replace its rainbow logo with a zombie. But at least last night, L.A. looked like, well, an NBA Finals-bound team with all the traditional roles and storylines. They have a generational player in his prime in Anthony Davis. They have a walking, talking redemption story in Dwight Howard and a wily veteran in Rajon Rondo. And they have LeBron James, who despite being three months shy of his 36th birthday, Sheesh. still has the most superstar quality of all. He is able to deliver exactly what his team needs, exactly when they need it. Last night, that meant stopping Jamal Murray, who continues to treat every one of these Western Conference Finals games like it's a trick shot compilation video. Ooh. I mean, come on. This was nasty. I'm going to go and say it. That one was harder than MJ's. <gasps> That one was harder. Come on. No, because MJ was going baseline, so the angle works. This one, you're coming straight on, and you're trying to get to the other side. Not people, I'm not saying I'm he's better say... than MJ. Let's not start at that news. I'm saying <laughs> that variation might have been a smidge more difficult than MJ. It was so good. And then in the fourth quarter, Murray scoring six points in two minutes, Come including on. this over six foot ten, Anthony Davis. Come on. Come on. That was third. That was his third most impressive shot. Right. Okay. Well, then what about this one? Take a look at this next one because this spin left-handed. This, this is the most impressive one of them all. Look right? at that. And he didn't even bank it in. That He actually made it. And you see him put it over to his left hand and actually <laughs> shoot it. Like, he's shooting it with touch as falling down. Like, come on. It's... That's one of the most difficult shots we've seen in the postseason. Ridiculous. After that shot, that is when LeBron went to Lakers coach Frank Vogel and asked if he could start checking Jamal. And from that point on, well, they can go great for Jamal. LeBron <laughs> chased Murray through screens, right? He shut down Murray at the rim more than once. Here he goes again. Now, are, are some of these actually fouls? Well, no. The, no, Nuggets, I the Nuggets say yes. In fact, well, after course. the Lakers used the league's refereeing website after game three to ask about plays where they thought LeBron should have gotten to the free throw line, Denver coach Mike Malone is now saying he has done the same on the behalf of Murray. But that's not going to change anything for the Nuggets in the win-loss column. And honestly, there were a lot of reasons the Lakers came out ahead last night. There was Dwight, who paid off his new spot in the starting lineup by dominating the boards early and finishing with a double-double. There was Anthony Davis, who dropped 34, including the Lakers' first 10 points, paying off a promise he'd made to himself after playing poorly in the series' previous game. Now, I later asked LeBron what he was looking for with Anthony in the off day between the two games, and here was his answer. You just see how low his brow is. If his, bro, if his brow is really low, then you know not to talk to him. If it's higher, then he, he's accepted the fact that you allowed to come into his office and talk to him. Yesterday, his brow was very low in this part, and uh, no one talked to him. So we already knew the mindset that he was in, and he came out and did it. Came out and did it indeed, and so did Rondo, who with seven assists last night passed Scottie Pippen to move to eighth on the NBA's all-time playoff list. Rondo also provided 11 points and five rebounds, as well as just his usual stabilizing presence, something that Davis in particular seems to feed off of. Remember, Rondo and AD first played together in New Orleans a few years ago, and last night AD spoke again of just how important Rondo is to him. When I got traded here, you know, he was actually the, the first person I called, you know, and told him that, you know, I wanted him to come back, you know, because I knew how much I, uh, I, I excelled with him and how, how much of a, a leader he is and, and his mindset on the floor and his will to win. To win a championship or even just to get to a finals, a team needs all kinds of characters, all kinds of contributors. The Lakers, well, they're still one win away, but last night they certainly looked the part. Richard, how are these bubble playoffs, do you think, impacting the legacies of both Rondo and Dwight Howard? 
Well, th- th- this is my thing. I don't think they're really impacting them at all because I think who they are has already been established. I think Dwight Howard is a Hall of Famer. Right now, he's missing that championship, and he is a contributor on this team if they're able to win a championship. So I believe that will elevate them. But I think what their legacy is, their legacy will only change if they win another, if they win a championship, and Rondo wins another championship. So, I, like, right now, n- like, there, nothing has been really affected about their quote-unquote legacy. Uh, if they win a championship, then I think that's where the changes will happen. But getting to the finals, even Rondo said they don't celebrate those in Boston. They don't celebrate conference finals in Boston. He said that. And you know what they don't celebrate conference finals or NBA finals? They don't celebrate that in L.A. They only celebrate championships. I don't know. I do want to be careful with that line of reasoning, only because Doc Rivers, when the Clippers were up 3-1 to get to the conference finals, a place the Clippers organization had never been before, he said, oh, that's not the larger goal. The larger goal is way beyond that. No one's going to celebrate. And then we know what happened. Every step is a good step, Richard. Every step is important. I mean, Brian, what do you think about their legacies here? Yeah, I agree with it, Richard, that, you know, like it's not like uh, Rondo is going to be remembered for what he's doing in this playoff run, but it's a reminder that there's always time in the NBA. It's one of the things that you learn. The longer you are around the league, you learn there's always time. Careers are long. Series are long. Games are long. Things can happen. And a year ago, I, I thought Dwight Howard maybe was done with the NBA. He had washed out with three teams in a row and he had been injured. Here he is making a major contribution to a team that's going for a championship. And Rondo, midway through this season, there were people around the Lakers who were saying he should be benched. And now he's arguably their third most important player. So it's just a reminder to everybody out there about how long careers are and how you can still change the story around you. First of all, that off the back inbounds is still amazing to see. And I'm going to take issue with both of you, especially Richard, who's just dropping things all over this arena, Brian, which is this. You mentioned Dwight Howard. You thought maybe he was out of the league a year, year and a half ago. Rajon Rondo, let me remind you guys, by the way, kicked out of Dallas, basically. I was there. I was there. Wasn't that during the playoffs, Richard? (laughs) Yes, I was there. I was there. So there is definitely. I was there. It was was unique. It was a unique time. Love Rondo to death. That's my guy, but it was unique. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.